What's good y'all? So today I'm going to share my best and biggest Poshmark sale to date. And I definitely want to just give a quick shout out to Flip because although Flip is not like the sponsor of today's video or anything like that, I actually was not going to use Flip anymore because they started charging $9 a month for it. I was using Flip for about three months prior to, you know, having to pay for it. And my Poshmark sales were fairly consistent because I was sharing my closet just about every day, several times a day. Then once, soon as I stopped using Flip, soon as I stopped sharing my closet, my sales plummeted. So I decided to just give it a couple weeks and I said to myself, you know, let me just give it a month. I'll pay the $9 one time. If it helps my sales, great. If it doesn't, they're not getting any more of my money. And I went ahead and I paid for it. And since I've done that, I've been sharing my closet very consistently several times a day, sending out offers to likers as soon as they like my stuff. And I'm cross-listing my items from eBay to Poshmark to Macari. If you guys didn't watch my Macari video where I broke down uh, all the new changes, including zero seller fees, I'll make sure I put that in the description so you guys can check that out. But Flip has definitely really, really been a huge boost for my business. In fact, it's almost like my personal virtual assistant. So it's really dope. So like I said, not sponsored. I'm just using it and talking about it because I'm, I'm actually like using it. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll make sure that I share it with you guys. Outside of that, let me share my screen and talk about this incredible sale that I recently got. Filson, first off, is an incredible brand. They sell, uh, they sell, I think they have a boots. I know they have clothes. I, I've sold more luggage like bags and stuff like that, messenger bags and stuff like that in the past. Uh, most recently, I think I sold a Filson hat on Poshmark for like 50 bucks. But Filson, uh, it's not one of those brands that I find often. I, may, I found Filson maybe 10 times in the last 10 years. But Filson is one of those brands that if you find it, most of the time it does sell for some good money. Now this one sold for $599. And for that reason, I took a lot of pictures. I listed it on eBay thinking it would sell there. I even did the calculated shipping so that depending on where it went, you know, I wouldn't have to come out of pocket to cover the cost of shipping. But it sold on Poshmark after like two weeks of me listing it. I spent 12 bucks on this Filson bag. Uh, I was going to keep it, but it's a little bigger than a carry-on. And I figured, you know, I'm not going to really use it often if it's, you know, too big to be considered a carry on. So I listed it, especially once I seen how much these were selling for. Boy, I, I, I was excited. So I put this up for $5.99 thinking I might have to accept an offer or something like that. But it ended up selling for $5.99. I didn't even need to accept the offer or anything. It was literally during a day where I was sharing my closet like I usually do first thing in the morning. And then it just sold, $5.99. So it did have a little minor scuffs and scratches on the bottom, as you can see right here. Just very, very minor stuff. But overall, this was in incredible condition. As you guys can see here, Poshmark offers free authentication. I don't know who Poshmark uses. So for me... This is my first time experiencing it. So it went to Oakland in, as opposed to going directly to the buyer. Um, the entire process took about two weeks because it took maybe three days for the for the uh, authentication office to get it. And it stayed there for a while. It stayed there for maybe uh, almost more than a week. It stayed there. And then it finally did go to the buyer. As soon as the buyer got it, they accepted it. And I was happy about that. Um, I was more so nervous that not that the bag would be fake, but I was nervous about the buyer feeling buyer's remorse because $599 for a bag to me is a lot of money. But at the same time, some of these bags sold for even more on eBay. So this was probably just a really good deal and they just wanted to take full advantage of it. So if you guys ever come across Filson, you grab that up immediately. So next up, we got this pair of Gucci shoes. Um, I don't sell a ton of Gucci stuff because I don't find Gucci often, right? But I found four pairs of shoes in the thrift in one day. It was three pairs of Gucci's and it was one pair of Salvatore Ferragamo's. Um, I'll actually share some of the other Gucci shoes that sold later on in the video. But the Ferragamo sold on eBay. I believe those sold for 60 And this on Poshmark. Um, just to show you guys the overall condition, this one sold for $95, right? So really good sale for me. I spent $7 a piece on all of the shoes. Um, like I said, they were vintage Gucci, so they didn't necessarily like have, like if you were somebody that was working at Goodwill and you wasn't like into fashion and you didn't really know much, it, yeah, it says Gucci, but it, it doesn't scream Gucci. It's not something that would be like, you know, 
Gucci monogram all over the place. And it's vintage, so at the end of the day, their price is super cheap. I was excited about it because this is not common for me. The Goodwill that I went to, they usually price everything overpriced. This would have at least been $30 just based on the fact that it was a pair of brown leather loafers. So this was exciting. It just gave me that reassurance that this was meant for me. Like I was supposed to go on a thrift that day and find it for, uh, for that price. But overall, these were in pretty good condition. And now that I think about it, I probably could have got even more for these Gucci's. But like I said, I only spent seven bucks. So I was happy with that. Next up, we got this pair of Stafford boots. Uh, Stafford is actually a JCPenney brand. Um, these actually came out of the personal collection because when I found these in the thrift, I kept them and I wore these a few times and I had no intentions of selling them. But I live in Arizona and I don't wear boots. I hardly even wear jeans often throughout the year. So these started to just collect some dust and I decided to just let them go. But overall, these boots were pretty dope. Um, they sell at JCPenney for probably $70. Um, they're not Goodyear welted or anything like that. So they're not like the highest quality. But overall, really dope pair of boots, and they sold for $39. That was my full asking price, and I think at the time I spent 10 bucks. Something else from the personal collection. i just been selling all of my stuff, especially like winter stuff, because like I said, I'm in Arizona. I don't wear it often enough. The last time I wore this was when I went to New York City to see my mom. Prior to that, I don't know the last time I wore this jacket. And I actually purchased this jacket when I lived in Buffalo. So that was a few years ago. That was at least... I left Buffalo in 2016. So that was almost 10 years ago when I left Buffalo, right? So overall, really, really good condition. It did have a couple little scratches on the leather. That's That was the only imperfection with this jacket. But other than that, I took really good care of it. Killing Archer, the brand itself doesn't sell for a lot of money. I was seeing people sell this jacket on eBay for like 25 to 30 bucks. But like I said, since it came out of the personal collection, and the only, the only issue with it was that it was a little too small for me. I didn't want to sell it for anything less than 60 bucks. So I priced it for $89 and I just waited until the right buyer came. I got an offer of 65 and I just jumped on it because Hill and Archer isn't something that people are searching for. But, you know, leather jacket, I probably should have put bomber, aviator, flight jacket. I messed up in the keywords. So don't necessarily watch this and like copy that. Bomber, Aviator, Flight, uh, even Sherpa. All of those are stuff that I probably should have put in the keywords. I don't know. I probably just copied and pasted somebody else's listing and just did it like that. So keep in mind, I, I probably should have used better keywords. But sold for 65 bucks at the end of the day. Next up, we have um, this Steve Nash Phoenix Suns jersey. Steve Nash, NBA legend, Phoenix Suns legend, Mavericks legend, uh, who else did he play for? He, he, had his, he had his best years with the Suns, right? And I'm in Arizona, so when I picked this up, I went to Burlington. I think I picked up 10 of these jerseys for like $25 a piece. Um, this was my last one I think I had. I sold a few of these on Poshmark from ranging from when I first got them. I sold a couple for like $89. I sold a few for like $60. Um, this last one sold for $59. Bucks. And overall, good jersey to pick up. Um, I was able to double up and sometimes even get a little more than double for most of them. But, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you get these jerseys from Burlington, like you get a bunch of them. But that means everybody's getting a bunch of them as well. So this was basically flooded. So I kind of had to sit on it for a little while. But when it finally did sell, you know, I got a decent amount of profit from it. Next up, we got a bundle. And I usually don't sell a lot of bundles at all. Like bundles for me is very, very rare. But... Like I told you guys earlier, I picked up not one, but two pairs, uh, but three pairs of Gucci shoes in one day. So let me show you some of the photos from this pair of Gucci's. Uh, fairly good condition. It did have some scuffs and some scratches and some a little minor wear and tear on the shoes. Um, but overall, I think they were in decent shape. Um, whoever picked these up, they're probably going to restore them, probably flip them for way more. But I know I didn't want to restore it or anything like that. Um, I just figured that I would price them appropriately. Um, I've seen a lot of vintage Gucci shoes sell on eBay for like 150 to maybe 180. If it sold for more than that, they were in really, really good shape, right? But these were vintage and I did nothing to them. I, I just wiped them down. I, I took the dust off and that was basically it. But um, they sold for 109. The person bundled both of them, didn't send an offer. They just bundled both and purchased them. So that made me think, hey, maybe they are a reseller. Maybe they're going to restore them. 
But at the end of the day, I don't really care because I paid seven bucks for them. So he can do what they want to do with them. It's theirs now. Um, here's the other pair of Gucci's. These were um, some nice loafers, some tassel loafers to be exact. It did have a small, um, like a little G on the tassel itself. I thought that was really dope. Let me see if I can find that, if I even took a picture of, yes, here it is. These, this was just a nice little touch that I seen on there and I thought that was nice. Um, so I priced both of them for 109, the buyer picked up both of them and really good sale, really, really good sale. Um, I try to take a lot of photos, especially if I'm selling something that does have some flaws or something that does have um, some, some wear and tear. I try to take as many photos as possible. So for this listing, I think I took maybe 12 or 13 photos just so that the buyer knew exactly what they was getting. And these are all, parts of the strategies, hacks, whatever you want to call it, to really make your listing stand out, right? You want to put as many photos so the buyer knows what they're getting, and that just kind of instills some more trust with them as well. Next up, we got this vintage L.L. Bean jacket. Uh, this one is actually for women. Really good shape. This was like brand new. Um, I knew it was used, of course, because this is a vintage jacket, but, you know, really nice details on this. It even had like a corduroy, um, cuff um i had to flip them inside out just so that people knew what they were about knew all the details um but at first i thought this was a men's jacket and if it was a men's jacket i probably would have kept it because it reminds me of barber which is another really good brand but this this uh jacket is dope but it was for women unfortunately so sold it for 40 bucks picked it up for i think eight or ten um it sold within about three or four weeks of listing it so overall definitely happy with the sale probably could have waited a little longer, maybe sold for maybe 60, but it is what it is. Next up, we got this pair of Thursday boots. Uh, if you're not familiar with Thursday boots, get familiar because Thursday boots is probably one of the bigger, uh, it's definitely popular on social media, right? It's popular on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, I don't find Thursday boots often in the thrift, not as much as I used to. I used to find them a lot more, but um, this was actually from the personal collection as well. Um, really good shape. Um, I wore them a few times, but of course with me wearing them a few times, they did start to get a little stained and some scuffs and stuff like that. So I priced them on the lower end. Um, I, I priced them for, I think 59 bucks and got a best offer of 52 and I accepted that. And I sold another pair of Thursday boots not too long ago and those sold for a little more because the condition was a little better, but these were in a size 10. I would, I would have been better with a size 10 and a half or even an 11. So that's why I had to go ahead and sell these. But um, Thursday boots, really good brand to be on the lookout for. If you can find them, you know, sell them, especially based on the condition. If it's in really good shape, you probably could have got close to 100 bucks for these. But these did have some, some stains and stuff like that. So I had to keep that in mind. Next up, we got this Hardwick jacket. Hardwick is one of those menswear brands that I don't pick up often. But because this one was brand new with tags, I figured why not let me take a chance on it. And it sold within about three weeks. So that was exciting. That was, that surprised me for sure. But, um, this, this plaid check print really, really dope. Honestly, if it, if it fit me, it's a 42 long. I'm more like a 42 regular at this point. If it fit me, I probably would have kept it because I really did like this pattern. But, um, Hardwick is one of those brands. I'm not going to say, oh, if you see it, always pick it up. If you see it brand new with tags, I would say, why not? And for me, that's the only reason why I took a chance on it. But for 10 bucks, I figured it was worth it. Next up here, we have a pair of Skechers work boots. These are the Sergeants. And for work boots, these were in really good shape. Like really, really good shape. Spent 12 bucks on this. I thought they were going to sell for a little more. Um, I had them listed for 59. I got a best store for 47. So I just jumped on that because for me, I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of money into it. And at the end of the day, it's a pair of sketches. So that's all I have for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, drop a comment. Let me know. Let me know if you learned any new brands or any new strategies in terms of listing on Poshmark. Um, if you haven't already, check out Flip. Um, let me know what you think of this setup because I was trying to find something where I could share my screen and show you guys all of the photos that I take because the photos and the keywords and just the way you structure your listings, especially on Poshmark and eBay, is super, super important. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. If you guys need any one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have a link in my description for that as well. And um, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.